Dharmasastra Sanskrit, Dharmasastra is a genre of Sanskrit texts, and refers to the treatises shastras of Hinduism on Dharma. There are many Dharmashastras, variously estimated to be 18 to about 100, with different and conflicting points of view. Each of these texts exist in many different versions, and each is rooted in Dharmasutra's texts dated to 1st millennium BCE that emerged from Kalpa Vedanga studies in the Vedic era. The textual corpus of Dharmasastra were composed in poetic verses, are part of the Hindu smritis, constituting divergent commentaries and treatises on duties, responsibilities, and ethics to oneself, to family, and as a member of society. The texts include discussion of ashrama stages of life, varna social classes, purushartha proper goals of life, personal virtues and duties such as ahimsa non-violence against all living beings, rules of just war and other topics. Dharmasastra became influential in modern colonial India history when they were formulated by early British colonial administrators to be the law of the land for all non-Muslims, Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, Sikhs in India after sharia was already accepted as the law for Muslims in Colonial India. Topic History. The Dharmashastras are based on ancient Dharma Sutras texts, which themselves emerged from the literary tradition of the Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sama, and Atharva, composed in second millennium BCE to the early centuries of the first millennium BCE. These Vedic branches split into various other schools shakas possibly for a variety of reasons such as geography, specialization and disputes. Each Veda is further divided into two categories namely the Samhita which is a collection of mantra verses and the Brahmanas which are prose texts that explain the meaning of the Samhita verses. The Brahmana layer expanded and some of the newer esoteric speculative layers of text were called Aranyakas while the mystical and philosophical sections came to be called the Upanishads. The Vedic basis of Dharma literature is found in the Brahmana layer of the Vedas. Towards the end of the Vedic period, after the middle of the first millennium BCE, the language of the Vedic texts composed centuries earlier grew too archaic to the people of that time. This led to the formation of Vedic supplements called the Vedangas, which literally means limbs of the Veda. The Vedangas were ancillary sciences that focused on understanding and interpreting the Vedas composed many centuries earlier, and included shiksha phonetics, syllable, chandas poetic meter, vyakarana grammar, linguistics, nirukta etymology, glossary, jyotisha timekeeping, astronomy, and kalpa ritual or proper procedures. The kalpa Vedanga studies gave rise to the Dharma Sutras, which later expanded into Dharma Shastras. The Dharmasutras The Dharmasutras were numerous, but only four texts have survived into the modern era. The most important of these texts are the sutras of Apastamba, Gautama, Bhadhyana, and Vasistha. These extant texts cite writers and refer opinions of seventeen authorities, implying that a rich Dharmasutras tradition existed prior to when these texts were composed. The extant Dharmasutras are written in concise sutra format, with a very terse incomplete sentence structure which are difficult to understand and leave much to the reader to interpret. The Dharmasastras are derivative works on the Dharmasutras, using a shloka four eight syllable verse style chandas poetry, anushtub meter, which are relatively clearer. The Dharmasutras can be called the guidebooks of Dharma as they contain guidelines for individual and social behavior, ethical norms, as well as personal, civil, and criminal law. They discuss the duties and rights of people at different stages of life like studenthood, householdership, retirement, and renunciation. These stages are also called ashramas. They also discuss the rights and duties of kings, judicial matters, and personal law such as matters relating to marriage and inheritance. However, Dharmasutras typically did not deal with rituals and ceremonies, a topic that was covered in the Shraudasutras and Griyasutras texts of the Kalpa <laughs> Vedanga. Style of composition The hymns of Arjveda are one of the earliest texts composed in verse. The Brahmana which belongs to the Middle Vedic period followed by the Vedanga are composed in prose. The basic texts are composed in an aphoristic style known as the sutra which literally means thread on which each aphorism is strung like a pearl. The Dharmasutras are composed in sutra style and were part of a larger compilation of texts, called the Kalpasutras which give an aphoristic description of the rituals, ceremonies and proper procedures. 
The Kalpasutras contain three sections, namely the Sraudasutras which deal with Vedic ceremonies, Gryasutras which deal with rites of passage rituals and domestic matters, and Dharmasutras which deal with proper procedures in one's life. The Dharmasutras of Apastamba and Bhadhyana form a part of larger Kalpasutra texts, all of which has survived into the modern era. The sutra tradition ended around the beginning of the Common Era and was followed by the poetic octosyllable verse style called the sloka. The verse style was used to compose the Dharmasastras such as the Manumriti, the Hindu epics, and the Puranas. The Age of Smritis that ended around the second half of the first millennium CE was followed by that of commentaries around the 9th century called Nibandha. This legal tradition consisted of commentaries on earlier Dharmasutras and Smritis. Authorship and dates About twenty Dharmasutras are known, some surviving into the modern era just as fragments of their original. Four Dharmasutras have been translated into English, and most remain in manuscripts. All carry the names of their authors, but it is still difficult to determine who these real authors were. The extant Dharmasutra texts are listed below. Apastamba 450 to 350 BCE. This Dharmasutra forms a part of the larger Kalpasutra of Apastamba. It contains 1364 sutras. Gautama 600 to 200 BCE. Although this Dharmasutra comes down as an independent treatise, it may have once formed a part of the Kalpasutra, linked to the Samaveda. It is likely the oldest extant Dharma text and originated in what is modern Maharashtra, Gujarat. It contains 973 sutras. Bhadhyana 500 to 200 BCE. This Dharmasutra, like that of Apastamba, also forms a part of the larger Kalpasutra. It contains 1,236 sutras. Vasistha 300 to 100 BCE. This Dharmasutra forms an independent treatise, and other parts of the Kalpasutra, that is, Shrauta and Griya sutras, are missing. It contains 1,038 sutras. The Dharmasutra of Apastamba and Bhadhyana form a part of the Kalpasutra, but it is not easy to establish whether they were historical authors of these texts or whether these texts were composed within certain institutions attributed to their names. Moreover, Gautama and Vasistha are ancient sages related to specific Vedic schools and therefore it is hard to say whether they were historical authors of these texts. The issue of authorship is further complicated by the fact that apart from Apastamba the other Dharmasutras have various alterations made at later times. There is uncertainty regarding the dates of these documents due to lack of evidence concerning these documents. Kane has posited the following dates for the texts, for example, though other scholars disagree, Gautama 600 BCE to 400 BCE, Apastamba 450 BCE to 350 BCE, Bhadhyana 500 BCE to 200 BCE, and Vasistha 300 BCE to 100 BCE. Patrick Olivelle suggests that Apastamba Dharmasutra is the oldest of the extant texts in Dharmasutra genre and one by Gautama second oldest, while Robert Lingott suggests that Gautama Dharmasutra is the oldest. There is confusion regarding the geographical provenance of these documents. According to Buhler and Kane, Apastamba came from South India, probably from a region corresponding to modern Andhra Pradesh. Bhadhyana also came from South, although evidence regarding this is weaker than that of Apastamba. Gautama likely came from western region, nearer to the northwestern region to which Panini belonged, and one which corresponds to where Maratha people in modern India are found. Nothing can be said about Vasistha due to lack of any evidence. Scholars have varied opinions about the chronology of these documents. Regarding the age of Apastamba and Gautama, there are opposite conclusions. According to Buhler and Lingat, Apastamba is younger than Bhadhyana. Vasistha is surely a later text. Literary structure The structure of these Dharmasutras primarily addresses the Brahmins both in subject matter and the audience. The Brahmins are the creators and primary consumers of these texts. The subject matter of Dharmasutras is Dharma. The central focus of these texts is how a Brahmin male should conduct himself during his lifetime. The text of Apastamba which is best preserved has a total of 1,364 sutras out of which 1,206 are devoted to the Brahman, whereas only 158 deals with topics of general nature. 
The structure of the Dharmasutras begin with the Vedic initiation of a young boy followed by entry into adulthood, marriage and responsibilities of adult life that includes adoption, inheritance, death rituals and ancestral offerings. According to Olivelle, the reason Dharmasutras introduced Vedic initiation was to make the individual subject to Dharma precepts at school, by making him a twice born man, because children were considered exempt from Dharma precepts in the Vedic tradition. The structure of Dharmasutra of Apastamba begins with the duties of the student, then describes householder duties and rights such as inheritance, and ends with administration of the king. This forms the early structure of the Dharma texts. However, in the Dharmasutras of Gautama, Bhadhyana and Vasistha some sections such as inheritance and penance are reorganized, and moved from householder section to king-related section. Olivelle suggests that these changes may be because of chronological reasons where civil law increasingly became part of the king's administrative responsibilities. The meaning of Dharma Dharma is a concept which is central not only in Hinduism Brahmanical traditions but also in Jainism and Buddhism. The term means a lot of things and has a wide scope of interpretation. The fundamental meaning of Dharma in Dharmasutras, states Olivelle is diverse, and includes accepted norms of behavior, procedures within a ritual, moral actions, righteousness and ethical attitudes, civil and criminal law, legal procedures and penance or punishment, and guidelines for proper and productive living. The term Dharma also includes social institutions such as marriage, inheritance, adoption, work contracts, judicial process in case of disputes, as well personal choices such as meat as food and sexual conduct. The source of Dharma, scriptures or empiricism The source of Dharma was a question that loomed in the minds of Dharma text writers, and they tried to seek, "...where guidelines for Dharma can be found." They sought to define and examine Vedic injunctions as the source of Dharma, asserting that like the Vedas, Dharma is not of human origin. This worked for rituals related rules, but in all other matters this created numerous interpretations and different derivations. This led to documents with various working definitions, such as dharma of different regions of social groups of different families The authors of Dharmasutras and Dharmashastra admit that these dharmas are not found in the Vedic texts, nor can the behavioral rules included therein be found in any of the Vedas. This led to the incongruity between the search for legal codes and Dharma rules in the theological versus the reality of epistemic origins of Dharma rules and guidelines. The Hindu scholar Apastamba, in a Dharmasutra named after him, tilde 400 BCE, made an attempt to resolve this issue of incongruity. He placed the importance of the Veda scriptures second and that of Samayakarika or mutually agreed and accepted customs of practice first. Apastamba thus proposed that scriptures alone cannot be source of law dharma, and dharma has an empirical nature. Apastamba asserted that it is difficult to find absolute sources of law, in ancient books or current people, states Patrick Olivelle with, "...the righteous dharma and the unrighteous adharma do not go around saying, here we are, nor do gods, gandharvas or ancestors declare, this is righteous and that is unrighteous." Most laws are based on agreement between the Aryas, stated Apastamba, on what is right and what is wrong. Laws must also change with ages, stated Apastamba, a theory that became known as Yuga Dharma in Hindu traditions. Apastamba also asserted in verses 2.29.11-15, states Olivelle, that, "...aspects of Dharma not taught in Dharmasastras can be learned from women and people of all classes." Apastamba used a hermeneutic strategy that asserted that the Vedas once contained all knowledge including that of ideal dharma, but parts of Vedas have been lost. Human customs developed from the original complete Vedas, but given the lost text, one must use customs between good people as a source to infer what the original Vedas might have stated the dharma to be. This theory, called the lost Veda theory, made the study of customs of good people as a source of dharma and guide to proper living, states Olivelle. The sources of dharma according to Gautama Dharmasutra are three, the Vedas, the Smriti tradition, akara the practice of those who know the Veda. These three sources are also found in later Dharmashastra literature. Bhadhyana Dharmasutra lists the same three, but calls the third as sista, sista literally polite cultured people or the practice of cultured people as the third source of dharma. 
Both Bhadhyana Dharmasutra and Vasistha Dharmasutra make the practices of Sista as a source of Dharma, but both state that the geographical location of such polite cultured people does not limit the usefulness of universal precepts contained in their practices. In case of conflict between different sources of Dharma, Gautama Dharmasutra states that the Vedas prevail over other sources, and if two Vedic texts are in conflict, then the individual has a choice to follow either. The nature of Dharmasutras is normative, they tell what people ought to do, but they do not tell what people actually did. Some scholars state that these sources are unreliable and worthless for historical purposes instead to use archaeology, epigraphy, and other historical evidence to establish the actual legal codes in Indian history. Olivelle states that the dismissal of normative texts is unwise, as is believing that the Dharmasutras and Dharmashastras texts present a uniform code of conduct and there were no divergent or dissenting views. The Dharmasastras Written after the Dharmasutras, these texts use a metered verse and are much more elaborate in their scope than Dharmasutras. The word dharmasastras never appears in the Vedic texts, and the word sastra itself appears for the first time in Yaska's Nirukta text. Katyayana's commentary on Panini's work third century BCE, has the oldest known single mention of the word dharmasastras. The extant dharmasastras texts are listed below. The Manumriti is the most studied and earliest metrical work of the dharmasastra textual tradition of Hinduism. The medieval era Buddhistic law of Myanmar and Thailand are also ascribed to Manu, and the text influenced past Hindu kingdoms in Cambodia and Indonesia. The Yajñavakya Smrta has been called the best composed and most homogeneous text of the Dharmasastra tradition, with its superior vocabulary and level of sophistication. It may have been more influential than Manumriti as a legal theory text. The Naradasmrta has been called the juridical text par excellence and represents the only Dharmasastra text which deals solely with juridical matters and ignoring those of righteous conduct and penance. The Visnusmrta is one of the latest books of the Dharmasastra tradition in Hinduism and also the only one which does not deal directly with the means of knowing Dharma, focusing instead on the Bhakti tradition. In addition, numerous other dharmasastras are known, partially or indirectly, with very different ideas, customs and conflicting versions. For example, the manuscripts of Burhaspatiasmrta and the Katyayanasmrta have not been found, but their verses have been cited in other texts, and scholars have made an effort to extract these cited verses, thus creating a modern reconstruction of these texts. Scholars such as Jolly and Iyengar have gathered some 2,400 verses of the lost Burhaspatiasmrta text in this manner. Brihaspati Smriti was likely a larger and more comprehensive text than Manumriti, yet both Brihaspati Smriti and Katyayana Smriti seem to have been predominantly devoted to judicial process and jurisprudence. The writers of Dharmasastras acknowledged their mutual differences, and developed a doctrine of consensus, reflecting regional customs and preferences. Of the four extant Dharmasastras, Manumriti, Yajnavalkamriti, and Naradamriti are the most important surviving texts. But, states Robert Lingott, numerous other Dharmasastras whose manuscripts are now missing, have enjoyed equal authority. Between the three, the Manumriti became famous during the colonial British India era, yet modern scholarship states that other Dharmasastras such as the Yajnavalkamriti appear to have played a greater role in guiding the actual Dharma. Further, the Dharmasastras were open texts, and they underwent alterations and rewriting through their history. Contents of Dharmasutras and Dharmasastra All dharma, in Hindu traditions, has its foundation in the Vedas. The Dharmashastra texts enumerate four sources of dharma, the precepts in the Vedas, the tradition, the virtuous conduct of those who know the Vedas, and approval of one's conscience self-satisfaction. The Dharmashastra texts include conflicting claims on the sources of dharma. The theological claim therein asserts, without any elaboration, that dharma just like the Vedas are eternal and timeless, the former is directly or indirectly related to the Vedas. Yet these texts also acknowledge the role of smriti, customs of polite learned people, and one's conscience as source of dharma. 
The historical reality, states Patrick Olivelle, is very different than the theological reference to the Vedas, and the Dharma taught in the Dharmasastra has little to do with the Vedas. These were customs, norms or pronouncements of the writers of these texts that were likely derived from evolving regional ethical, ideological, cultural and legal practices. The Dharmasutra and Dharmasastra texts, as they have survived into the modern era, were not authored by a single author. They were viewed by the ancient and medieval era commentators, states Olivelle, to be the works of many authors. Robert Lingett adds that these texts suggest that a rich literature on dharma already existed before these were first composed. These texts were revised and interpolated through their history because the various text manuscripts discovered in India are inconsistent with each other, and within themselves, raising concerns of their authenticity. The Dharmasastra texts present their ideas under various categories such as Akara, Vyavahara, Prayaschita, and others, but they do so inconsistently. Some discuss Akara but do not discuss Vyavahara, as is the case with Parasara Smriti, for instance, while some solely discuss Vyavahara. Akara 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 literally means good behavior, custom. It refers to the normative behavior and practices of a community, conventions and behaviors that enable a society and various individuals therein to function. Vyavahara Vyavahara, Vyavahara literally means, "...judicial procedure, process, practice, conduct". The due process, honesty and testimony, considering various sides, was justified by Dharmashastra authors as a form of Vedic sacrifice, failure of the due process was declared to be a sin. The Vyavahara sections of Dharma texts included chapters on duties of a king, court system, judges and witnesses, judicial process, crimes and penance or punishment. However, the discussions and procedures in different Dharmasutra and Dharmashastra texts diverge significantly. Some Dharmasastra texts, such as that attributed to Brihaspati, are almost entirely Vyavahara related texts. These were probably composed in the Common Era, around or after 5th century of 1st millennium. Prayaschita <laughs> Prayaschita literally means, "...atonement, expiation, penance". Prayaschitas are asserted by the Dharmasutra and Dharmashastra texts as an alternative to incarceration and punishment, and a means of expiating bad conduct or sin such as adultery by a married person. Thus, in the Apastamba text, a willing sexual act between a male and female is subject to penance, while rape is covered by harsher judicial punishments, with a few texts such as Manumriti suggesting public punishments in extreme cases. Those texts that discuss prayaschita, states Robert Lingett, debate the intent and thought behind the improper act, and consider penance appropriate when the effect had to be balanced, but cause was unclear. The roots of this theory are found in the Brahmana layer of text in the Samaveda. <inaudible> Secondary works The Dharmasutras and Dharmasastras attracted secondary works called commentaries Beshya would typically interpret and explain the text of interest, accept or reject the ideas along with reasons why. Another category of secondary literature derived from the Dharmasutras and Dharmasastras were the digests nibandas, sometimes spelled nibandas. These arose primarily because of the conflict and disagreements on a particular subject across the various Dharma texts. These digests attempted to reconcile, bridge or suggest a compromise guideline to the numerous disagreements in the primary texts, however the digests in themselves disagreed with each other even on basic principles. Geographically, the medieval era digest writers came from many different parts of India, such as Assam, Bengal, Bihar, Gujarat, Kashmir, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, and Uttar Pradesh. The oldest surviving digest on Dharma texts is Kritiyakalpataru, from early 12th century, by Lakshmidara of Kanauj in North India, belonging to the Varanasi school. The digests were generally arranged by topic, referred to many different Dharmasastras for their contents. They would identify an idea or rule, add their comments, then cite contents of different Dharma texts to support or explain their view. <laughs> <laughs> Women jurists 
A few notable historic digests on Dharmasastras were written by women. These include Lakshmidevi's Vivadachandra and Mahadevi Dhiramadi's Danavakyavali. Lakshmidevi, State West and Buhler, gives a latitudinarian views and widest interpretation to Yajnavalka Smriti, but her views were not widely adopted by male legal scholars of her time. The scholarly works of Lakshmidevi were also published with the pen name Balambada, and are now considered classics in legal theories on inheritance and property rights, particularly for women. Dharma texts and the schools of Hindu philosophy The Mimamsa school of Hindu philosophy developed textual hermeneutics, theories on language and interpretation of dharma, ideas which contributed to the Dharmasutras and Dharmasastras. The Vedanga fields of grammar and linguistics, Vyakarana and Nirukta, were the other significant contributors to the Dharma text genre. Mimamsa literally means the desire to think states Donald Davis, and in colloquial historical context, "...how to think, interpret things, and the meaning of texts". In the early portions of the Vedas, the focus was largely on the rituals, in the later portions, largely on philosophical speculations and the spiritual liberation of the individual. The Dharma texts, over time and each in its own way, attempted to present their theories on rules and duties of individuals from the perspective of a society, using the insights of hermeneutics and on language developed by Mimamsa and Vedanga. The Nyaya school of Hindu philosophy, and its insights into the theories on logic and reason, contributed to the development of and disagreements between the Dharmasastra texts, and the term Nyaya came to mean, justice. Influence Dharmasastras played an influential role in modern era colonial India history, when they were used as the basis for the law of the land for all non Muslims, Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, Sikhs. In 18th century, the earliest British of the East India Company acted as agents of the Mughal emperor. As the British colonial rule took over the political and administrative powers in India, it was faced with various state responsibilities such as legislative and judiciary functions. The East India Company, and later the British Crown, sought profits for its British shareholders through trade as well as sought to maintain effective political control with minimal military engagement. The administration pursued a path of least resistance, relying upon co-opted local intermediaries that were mostly Muslims and some Hindus in various princely states. The British exercised power by avoiding interference and adapting to law practices as explained by the local intermediaries. The colonial policy on the system of personal laws for India, for example, was expressed by Governor General Hastings in 1772 as follows. That in all suits regarding inheritance, marriage, caste, and other religious usages or institutions, the law of the Quran with respect to Muhammadans, and those of the Shastra with respect to Gentus shall be invariably be adhered to. For Muslims of India, the Sharia or the religious law for Muslims was readily available in Al Hadiyya and Fatawa i Alamgiri written under the sponsorship of Aurangzeb. For Hindus and other non-Muslims such as Buddhists, Sikhs, Jains, Parsis and tribal people, this information was unavailable. The British colonial officials extracted from the Dharmasastra, the legal code to apply on non-Muslims for the purposes of colonial administration. The Dharmashastra derived laws for non-Muslim Indians were dissolved after India gained independence, but Indian Muslim Personal Law Shariat Application Act of 1937 continued to be the personal and family law for Indian Muslims. For non-Muslims, a non-religious uniform civil code was passed by Indian Parliament in the 1950s, and amended by its elected governments thereafter, which has since then applied to all non-Muslim Indians. <laughs> Major English translations <laughs> 1. Best for beginners Olivelle, Patrick, 1999. Dharmasutras, The Law Codes of Apastamba, Gautama, Bodhyana, and Vasistha. New York, Oxford UP. Olivelle, Patrick. 2004. The Law Code of Manu. New York, Oxford UP. 2. Other major translations 
Kane, P. V. Ed. and Trans. 1933. Katyayanasmrta on Vyavahara, Law and Procedure. Pune, Oriental Book Agency. Larivière, Richard W. 2003. The Naradasmrta, 2nd Rev. Ed. Delhi, Mudalal Banarsidas. Roche, Ludo, 1956. Vyavahara Sindamani, A Digest on Hindu Legal Procedure. Gent. Topic 3. Early translations with full text online. Ja, Ganganath, Trans. Manasmurda with the Manubhashya of Medhadithi, including additional notes, 1920. Buller, Georg, Trans. The Laws of Manu, SBE Vol. 25, 1886. Buller, Georg, Trans. The Sacred Laws of the Aryas, SBE Vol. 2, 1879, Part 1, Apastamba and Gautama. Buller, Georg, Trans. The Sacred Laws of the Aryas, SBE Vol. 14, 1882, Part 2, Vasistha and Badayana. Jolly, Julius, Trans. The Institutes of Visnu, SBE Vol. 7, 1880. Jolly, Julius, Trans. The Minor Law Books, SBE Vol. 33, Oxford, 1889. Contains both Burhaspatiasmrta and Naradasmrta. Topic. See also. Dhammasattha. Equals equals notes.